should be good line. Okay. Or, or at least if you if you uh, if you're happy to do it live. Um, I don't care. I'll do it, man. <laughs> That's us live. Uh, good evening and welcome to Fate of the Dice's Curse of Strahd. Tonight we have Christina, Camilla, Rimiru, Jake, and Talon. Who would like Hello. to go over what happened last week? Last week, well, we uh, met up in the town of Please Film and Gas Here for me, DM. Barovia. It's in the town of Barovia, where at the end, where you come from your last uh, bit of adventure, you were able to meet up with a certain cleric at Metro Party, which is, of course, played by myself. And after setting out and agreeing to, be, to you know, join the party, we um, set ourselves going southbound through uh, the lands and, uh, to passing over a certain amount of um, different possible encounters because we're on a clock here apparently we did come upon a place where you had another encounter re recently which you guys escaped from but unfortunately it led to no additional information so we pressed on there we were set upon by a set of giant spiders we had to actually eat them off and then free their captive and now we find ourselves inexorably here. Okay. So I believe, uh, yeah, so I believe you'd, uh, you'd killed the spiders and we're, uh, we're in the company of a man named Hansi. He'd been caught up in the webs and he'd had to cut him free. Uh, and, and he'd offered to, uh, to, to show you to somewhere safe for the night. Is there anything else you wanted to do? Have we cut him down, or is he still like in the web? Oh, you you uh, you you have cut him down. Uh, he's uh, he's a bit shaky on his feet, you know, like a, a newborn foal. Um, Don't blame him. But uh, is able to uh, to walk. One of the first things he'll do is uh, he'll, he'll take a, a, a long, hearty chug from a water flask by his side. So, that safe place you mentioned? He says, uh, I'll take you there now. The, uh, the bugger of snow me. And uh, gestures for you to follow him. I guess we'll follow him. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to. So he sort of does a, a half walk, half stagger. Uh, he uh, he's likely been poisoned by the spiders during his time. Um, if you know, he'll uh, he'll explain that he's he's been there for. He believes two days. 
uh, and is is quite weak, but uh, he is able to uh, to stand and to walk. So you have no additional difficulties during the night, and whilst you started uh, near the crossroads here. Um, he is able to lead you for a few miles, was it say five, but it would be more like six, um, to a place over here. So the, the journey would be about an hour and a half. And uh, as you uh, as you approach, you can hear the sound of drums and other instruments playing in the distance. And as you get really close, um, you can see the lights of fires. The music they're playing is Present. like festival music, or is it more like war music? Uh, oh, more festival music than than war music. Uh, and you know, Hansi's uh, spirit seem to uh, to pick up as uh, he approaches. Yeah. Soon the road opens up a bit, and you can see that there's uh, the the river behind uh, an encampment. There are uh, there are a few wagons and a few tents, and there's a there's a bonfire sort of set in the centre of them, and uh, a lot of people sitting round. Uh, as my son suggests you to come forward, you're uh, approached uh, by by three guards uh, and a, a, a tall man with a, with a saber at his side who, uh, who, who looks at you all and says uh, Ah, Hansi Yes, it's Hansi, isn't it? Which Hansi nods Thought some friends for the night? He, uh, he nods is, uh, 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 yes, Captain. The, uh, the man turns to you and says, Very well. I'm Captain Elias. You may uh, join us for the night if you're friends of, uh, of a friend. Yeah. He looks at Hansi again and says, uh, But where are the Moslavics? They must have been here recently. To which Hansi nods. You, uh, you notice he's trying not to look this man in the eye. And uh, Captain Elias eventually uh, says to him Anzi there's something not right is there to which Hansi looks up and uh, the guards around him uh, all make a, all make a strange sign all at once and uh, you hear uh, the captain mutter the word more to. The uh, captain turns to Hansi once again and says, You have something to answer for, don't you? I'll deal with that later. He turns to you and says, In the meantime, come join us. And the, uh, the, 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 the guards move to let you pass. I'm not a very trusting person, so I would request that I make an insight check to see what's going on here. Go for it. That is a 24. Okay. So, uh, 
you know, from your reading of the conversation, uh, this uh, this Captain Elias uh, initially initially seemed perfectly happy to, um, to 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 let you all in, um, but upon seeing something in Hansi's eyes, um, seems somewhat unhappy about letting him specifically in. Uh, the sign that uh, the guards all made uh, appears to be one you would use to ward off evil. Mm. They, um, there doesn't seem to be any specific ill will directed towards uh, you all, though. me that unadvised caution it seems like these people are very much on the edge well I'm gonna step up and take a spot around the fire Inside, you can see that there's a, 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 a good amount of men, women, and children inside. Um, you know, some uh, some are playing instruments. You know, some are eating, some are drinking. Uh, and you know, they are genuinely they generally seem to be uh, finding a way to spend a pleasant night. You um, you notice as you pass. That all their, you know, caravans and tents uh, have a symbol of uh, of a raven on them, um, looking very similar to, um, to to those on the uh, the letters you've been sent by Drad. I'm going to lean over to the person next to me and I'm going to ask, are you in frequent contact with the Count? So it's, uh, it's an old man who uh, returns to you and says, Count? Never seen him, but long ago he gave our people and those who join us protection on the road. As long as we bear his symbol, his uh, errand servants shouldn't trouble us. Of course, we have to set a guard, because the uh, door that lives here is his. But uh, he helps us with our trade, but uh, I've never seen him. Wait. Are these the Bastani? These do seem to be the Bastani that you heard about in Barovia. Might be a good idea to get in their good side. The, uh, the old man's is, uh, where are you from? We were... Well... My associates and I were among the camp's most recent tributes. Uh, he looks, uh... He looks at the ground, sadly. Well, it was, well it's nice meeting you anyways. Thank you, and it is a pleasure to be here. He offers you some, uh, some meat from the fire. Care to sup with us? I would love to. 
Is it food free? I, I don't uh, impose you to, uh, to, to certain aspects of, you know, uh, the cultures that you, you've observed that sometimes offering a food can be um, both a measure of peace, but also, of course, a measure of asking of someone's... Uh, and as soon as he realizes everyone's kind of looking at him funny, he kind of peters off, stops talking. Uh, the uh, the nearest that the Stani would, would would tell him that uh, as as guests you may uh, you may eat with them. In case I'll take out my notebook again and start jotting down more information about uh, these Vishdani people. For the asterisk, therefore, may not be the correct spelling. Uh, so, um, so, so, you sitting um, around the fire as well? But uh, yeah, no. Well, Cautiously around fire, yes. Just, you know, just take this spot right here. That's okay. No worries. You uh, you sit um, you sit yourself between an old woman and a tiefling. We will get into the the description of this character later. I just want to check what uh, Rimiru and Christina are doing. Um, yeah. I'm talking to this person. Just attempting to flirt with them. <laughs> I say I, I assume that's a woman. You mean? We'll say yes. <laughs> it's the one I'm talking to right now. I, eh? uh, I'm just assuming that I'm throwing over. Uh, okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do this. Is there anything you want to say, sort of like specifically? I think it's just these lines saying, "I'll make my queen if you agree to do a courtship with me." Can you make me a persuasion check, please? Yeah. Uh. Okay. So you've, you know, you've, uh, you've convinced her that uh, you know you, you, you're not insane, and that there genuinely does seem to be some kind of kingdom behind you. Um. She, uh, she says to you, uh, there are no kings or queens in here, yeah. only a count with no countess. But, uh, if you like, we can always more dance the prastanata tonight. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but okay. She, uh, she gives you a little wave. Is there anything else you'd like to do? No, I'm, I'm too well to hang out with these peasants. <laughs> okay, so are you going to royally stand on the side of the road? Yeah, and hopefully someone... Well, hopefully someone will notice. I've sent you a quick message about something. I did remember. Uh, I'll just lean against this caravan. 
for a bit. Um, alas, Hansy, why is everyone seeming so tense around you? He, uh, he, he tends to you and says, We, the Stana, have several clans. I'm, I was part of the Maslavuk. They, uh, kicked me out and left me to die. And, uh, these, well, the, uh, I was hoping the Bogorovs would take me in. Captain Elias, uh, at this point says, You know our customs, Hansi. We cannot shelter a mortu. Is there anything you'd like to do, uh, Christina? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just move a little bit closer to the one fire, but not. That goes. As you, uh, as you do so, I imagine we're in uh, about the right distance for that. Uh, a mark on your hand begins to glow, and if I'm not mistaken, you'd be able to see a similar mark on the tiefling by the fireplace, by the by the uh, bonfire. I look over and... How long? Timmy, is that you? Stop with the teeny. What are you doing here? The I'm not... looking for you. The not persistently asked for you, mum and dad, not to come looking for me. Of course you'll do the opposite. <laughs> Well, Mom and Dad told me not to, but when somebody tells me not to, I got to do it anyways. Am I the only person who's missing something here? I walk up to Talon and I just, like, give him a big old punch in the arm. Ow! This is my brother. I'm not able to move my token. Is that supposed to be? Uh, Ah, I know what I've done. I've forgotten to assign it a user. Typical to fools within our control. <laughs> within my control. There we go. Yay! I can move again. I'm no longer paralyzed. That part's <laughs> healed. My one question here, Teeny, is what the hell are you doing out here? I, well, after running away at home, I ended up unconscious somewhere, and now I'm here with these guys. And I gotta follow you to keep an eye on you, make sure you don't run off again. Sorry, everyone. This is my brother Talon. He's sort of gonna wave. I haven't met him yet. I don't know where near the party. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing your own thing currently. Well, technically speaking, my character is embarrassed to be with BC when you lot. Oh, tell us we noticed something different about Christina's hair. It's now got a blonde highlight going through it. Do you... You just go off and change your entire look, don't you? You run away and everything's different. Well, I didn't dye my hair. This just randomly appeared for some reason. 
I would say that's weird, but uh, coming from our family, that doesn't surprise me. Very true. So who are your friends? Uh, I point to, come here, come here. That's Jake next to you. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, P- Professor Jake Leo, yes, um, um, of the Owlhaven Academy, and uh, I'm not sure what the proper uh, etiquette here is. It, are we supposed to sh- shake hands or bow? I'm not sure. A uh, handshake would be fine. Right. Is it left, left, left hand or right hand? It depends on the culture. And it's kind of alternates between left and right, offering left or right hand. Well, I'm left-handed, so I, I use my left hand. Okay, okay, all right, very well. Whatever, whatever it takes to make this less awkward than it is, so we'll shake hands for the appropriate amount of time. Right, I, I believe I'm done. What do you mean, less awkward? You're already making it plenty so. I... You'll excuse me, as, as the, the common colloquialism is, I don't get out much. It sounds like it. But one researcher to another, learning new cultures is always a trick. Yes, yes it is, very much. Speaking of learning, uh, how long have you actually been here within the mists? I just got here. Not too long ago. Actually, this is a question I should have asked the rest of you as well in here, because my time here has been rather short, but you are obviously not locals like the... Um, and he kind of points over at the Vishani people. So, you all came here at different times. Is that correct? So, so uh, who's this question direct to that? Yes, yeah, just uh, how how long have, has each of you been here if you haven't arrived here at the same time? Well... I arrived at the same time as Kimir did. I, I meant to ask the prince as well, but the prince seems rather. There's a word I'd like to use here that's, that's you know, credit. Occupied with a woman? Yes, that sounds about right. For a good time, that's what he's hoping for. <laughs> good time. Sounds, sounds a lot like some of my students. <laughs> On the other note, uh, Christina, I finally found out how to do the wild shape thing. You left just as I figured out how to do it. That's cool. So I can be a little snake in your boot now. Please don't. Why? It's fun. But I don't particularly like having snakes in my boots. I don't like boots. This conversation's better, but I'm glad I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like um, everyone's uh, settled into the uh, to the camp. Um, 
Ramu would be able to see the uh, the, 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 the captain sort of uh, take Hansi towards the uh, the tree and uh, ask. Uh, you know, they, they seem to be having uh, some sort of conversation <coughs> that. Uh, Concludes with uh, the captain saying, if "What you say is true." And the Muslavics have a problem. By our customs, I cannot help you, but by politeness, I cannot stop you walking in and finding a spot by the river where you would not be attacked. Uh, Hansi nods and begins to shuffle his way to basically the uh, the far end of the of the camp. You can hear the uh, the captain sigh. And uh, and head back towards the fire. Is anyone uh, is, uh, in, is is there anything that no one wants to do whilst here? Rest. They really need a rest. <laughs> I also like to rest, but first I have many questions for the Visanti about their their culture and, you know, their status here in, um, Barovia and how they handle, like, the wildlife and things like that. Because spiders aren't nearly that big where I come from. Um, it's just here. The, uh, assuming that this is directed at the, uh, the woman next to you, she, uh, she says, these woods are old. Hide many terrible beasts. They're fortunate to be protected. I'd also like to ask, and have you seen this woman? And I bring out the picture I have of the person I'm looking for she would stand out she has one eye she's over six feet tall the uh, she, shakes, uh, she shakes her head I don't believe I don't believe I have maybe you'll have to look in one of the uh, one of the towns out west. Any town in particular, since I'm, I'm not familiar with this uh, this area or this place. So you say a town out west. Well, is she uh, she thinks for a moment. Well, if you're from outside and uh, you've come from Barovia. And uh, she must have come in from somewhere else. Maybe, maybe Kresk. You don't go there very often, but uh, it exists uh, just a few days west of Valaki, a few days north of here. Thank you very much, ma'am. You've been in, in, incredibly helpful. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to lay down and rest for, for a bit because I'm, I'm very f much fatigued from my earlier adventures. And I'll grab some food that's offered for free, that I verified is free, and I'll go with the rest of everyone else to, uh, you know, rest up. The, um, she says, uh, 
Don't go falling asleep just yet. Uh, the captain will want to do the dollop. And as soon as she says that, I'll stand up and then turn right back around and sit right back down. But you say you have students you might like it, it uh, a nightly lesson. Some wisdom for the young'uns. Oh, of course. Okay. So, um... Tiva the talking at sitting by the fire. Is anyone else doing anything else? I don't think so. The, uh, the, the, the captain uh, will uh, gather uh, the other Vistani uh, to, to, uh, to make an announcement. And uh, he'll uh, He'll motion for, uh, for quiet and say, uh, Tonight I will give the Dorok a nightly tale or lesson. Although a Dorok can sometimes be very long, I sense that we are weary, and I would not wish to bore our guests. The man points in your direction and drops his voice to a low, solemn tone. We, Vistani, are people of family, tradition. Do not turn our hands, heads, or hearts against each other. To do so is to forsake what it is to be, Vistani. Those who break the faith of our people can no longer participate in this life. They are exiled from the family and called Mortu, the, or the living dead. No Vistani will harbor a Mortu. They are marked as an exile. This is not a mark that can be seen with the eye, but a mark which every Vistani feels when looking or more to in the eye. The crime itself is not visible. Perhaps he killed an uncle in anger, or perhaps he thought to get drunk rather than mind his young nephews when a boy came to harm. We do not know why Amortu was exiled, and when we look upon him, only the tears no longer of the Vistani. For some Vistani, compassion upsets the heavy weight of tradition. A family provides comfort and shelter to Amortu, it seems a kindness to one who appears, but it's not Vistani. It is not the nature of a man in his past actions. The mortu will drink again or murder again, and suffering will surely follow. We hold our traditions because they keep us safe, safe from wild beasts, safe from violent outsiders, and safe from the wickedness of mortu. And this is as it is, a restful night's sleep to all. And with that, a lot of the uh, Pistani move to adjourn to, to their tents. Some bedrolls are set aside for you by the fire, uh, if you do not have your own already. I I'll set up my own, out of trust issues, of course. Do you expect me to sleep on the floor? <laughs> Alan's all for sleeping on the earth. Do they have any idea who I am? And I to sleep on a cold, hard floor all night? It's for the peasants. Other royals do it too, you know. Mean Tang did it all the time when we were kids and we had sleepovers. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you would the ground is amazing. Well, I'm a, I'm a guest. <laughs> as you um, as you settle yourself, uh, you notice know, that the, the captain seems to have a uh, a troubled expression. And uh, he uh, he moves towards uh, a tent out in the back and uh, doesn't come out for some time. I'm gonna investigate. I want to see what he's up to. It's okay, Jen. Uh, which tent is it? Ah, uh, it be this tent over here. Is it okay if Rimuru investigates? He's a bit curious. Uh, who are you asking this to? Sorry? Uh, to whom are you asking? I'm asking you uh, if it's okay if Rimuru goes up to investigate. Uh, Rimuru Rimu can, can certainly go up to investigate. Um, as she approaches, um, Hansi would hiss for her not to disturb the tent. And I think Rimuru's uh, I'm going to ignore that. Rimuru's going to just walk in. <laughs> He's a nosy, really, really nosy person. Oh. So, um, as, as you, uh, as you go, uh, as you, as you go into the, t the tent, so the tent is one of those ones where it has, like, a main compartment, and then it's, like, a front, uh, front area. Um, uh, what do you call that? Anyway, um, inside, um, oh, yeah. you can see, uh, you can see uh, a middle-aged woman. Who, uh, who looks at you and says, uh, can I help you? Uh, I just want to speak to your leader, dude. I'm sure he will be out shortly. He's uh, engaged at the moment. Uh, uh, not exactly. Conversing with one of our elders and does not wish to be disturbed. Well, I'm, I am royalty, so I order you to let me in. <laughs> there is no royalty but the Count. And uh, she moves away part of her cloak, uh, revealing a, a belt uh, full of daggers. So you insist, I would advise you to leave. I do an intimidation. I really went in that room. <laughs> you can, you can certainly try and make an, uh, an intimidation check. Yes, I go to see. So you're um, you're able to push into the front area uh, before she can stop you. Um, inside, you can uh, you can hear the shuffling of cards and the sound of chanting. But before you can go in, a uh, an arm is finally put uh, across the uh, this inner, um, you know, canvas door, um, bearing a knife 
and you hear a hiss in your ear that says, One more step. Are you sure you want to do that? Like, uh, woman. She, uh, intimidation check or no, she will not let you in any further without well, um, uh, a violent attempt. Right then, I'll just tell, I'll just bring some more people with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to the party and... Uh, everyone, they're doing unspeakable things in that tent. Bring the dog! Don't kill him. The two Vistani who, uh... Who are still present round the uh, round the campfire? Uh, look at you and say, "What have you been doing in there?" Nothing. I just wanted to know where the party was. I wanted more fun. There's no fun here. And make a complaint. Someone come with me, please. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. What, 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 is this, what, what is this all about? I don't know what they're doing, but there's weird things happening in that tent, and I want to know what it is. I'll pay is. Perhaps we can find some kind of a. Easier resolution here, resolution here. So it seems like you're um, <clears throat> a little, as the young people say, keyed up. Um, I, I, I'll be more inclined to go with you if need be. Is anyone else yeah. going to volunteer? <laughs> to we have sure enough venison. <laughs> Don't bring up the venison. <laughs> or goose. Yeah. The venison? Or goose, venison. yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's chanting and cards shuffling. That sounds like a ritual. So can someone come with me to convince this woman to let me in? I'm gonna go and skim some rocks by the riverside. Uh, I better put my health up because I've not even done a long rest since the last game we played. <laughs> If we haven't had time to take a long rest yet. Yeah. Right, I'm going. I'm going back. Whoever wants to come with me, come along. I don't care what you do. Come with me. I'll go, but I'm I'll not go. lockstep following the prince here. But I'll go. This is ridiculous. I'm just gonna get on my bed roll and go to sleep. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> make giving you a sleep. Uh. So Talon's also asleep. I like my treaty. What about the right. dog? Are we taking the dog with us? Oh, tree! Oh, I'll come and join you in the tree! You can take the dog if you wish. Yes, I need the dog. It's vicious. <laughs> I'm so back, that. lady. So as you open the front of the tent, you can see that <laughs> Captain uh, Elias is now in the uh, you know in the front section. Oh, oh crap! He's and, out. Uh, he uh, he looks at the three of you and and says, uh, "I heard you wanted me. What can I do for you?" I want a bare bed and a tent. I ain't sleeping on the cold, hard floor without a tent. Right away, Jake looks and says, Excuse me, did you just come get me over here with calling out all that, that inf in inter interference because you wanted to speak to the manager? 
But when you kill this lady, she was gonna refuse. You were willing to risk our safety with people riding a safe harbor from a very dangerous land. You were willing to attack them and risk her over lodgings. I am a prince. Uh, yes, prince. Yes. In my study of, of people of long past, one thing I've noticed, well, you know what the difference between the remains of a pauper and the remains of a royal are? No. Yeah, right, there are none, because they are both dead and gone. But in certain places, stations and places of, of in society matter not, especially when it comes to terms of survival, as in now. So if all you request is... A, bed, a place to sleep is better than anyone else. Let me ask you this one question. Please ask me honestly. What makes you think you deserve something better than what these people have to provide right here? I'm a royal prince. I, oh, I am destined to be king. If I'm going to be treated this way, then this is treason. Just look over to our, our host state. Excuse us for a moment, though. I just needed a moment to speak to our prince here, but please, just can you give us a moment to stick to the side here, please, if you will. Certainly. Thank you, thank you. He, uh, he lets you leave. Wait, wait, I have one more question for the, the this dude. Uh, what were you doing in that, uh, in there? I was consulting with one of our elders in a, uh, on a private matter. No, it didn't sound like talking to me, it sounded like you're chanting. You're, you're either evil cult or something. He, uh, he sighs. Is it? Our elder is around me. She has the gift of prophecy. I have a, an important matter. She was happy to use her ability. Hopefully it was proper me put my dagger into your heart. <laughs> um. Oh. Uh, Prince, a, a moment, if you will. And, and Jake will definitely like look at you right in the eyes. Says, "Prince, a moment, if you will." Okay. <laughs> Again, I'll look to him or, or just say, "Excuse us for a second. And I'll just kind of say, like, "Come here, come here, come here, come here, come, come here." Look, why didn't you mention earlier that there was some kind of there was some kind of chanting or magic spell possibly being used, especially when it comes to things like cults? Well, technically, you see... technically speaking, you're still a newbie in this party. These people don't listen to me. Actually, what well, I did at a camp. Yes, but let me put things in context for you, my friends. You may be royalty where you're from, but this is not where you're from. Am I right? Yeah, I'm from far, far, far away. Well, where you live, that place in far, far, far away, let me guess, you have an army at your disposal, am I right? When I'm out speaking, yes. Master Dead Arms? Well, I can't exactly do that. My dad owns the army. Here's what I'm saying. They are not here, and we, as a group, are outnumbered by these people around here. They also know the terrain, as you can tell from the tents, and they know the threats here that they can navigate easily and are not affected by uh, the darkness of this land. So my question for you is this. Do you want to make enemies of these people? Maybe. Rubs his temples for a second here. <clears throat> Find a 
I'm out here. For a couple of I will get I will cast a good and evil to look around this place over here to see if there's any issue here. We go back to speak to them again. If there is some kind of malicious effect in some way going over, I will at my I might die here twice to let you know. And then we will back away and handle this in a different way. Just all out violence is not the answer. Well, I can't actually get an army anyway. I'm not just a prince, I'm also exiled. Uh, what, right, well, you know, uh, Nick just takes his glasses off and says, What? I'm um, exiled. My dad exiled me to teach me a lesson. Well, Prince, I think this is actually part of this lesson. You have to understand something. If you want, if you want respect, you must earn it. And this may be part of it. Working out a peaceful resolution with these people would be much better than trying to threaten them into getting something as simple as the better accommodations. So, let us smooth things out with these people and maybe they can give you better accommodations if you speak to them nicely as opposed to just demanding them. Can we do that? Fine. <laughs> okay, well, this is good first steps. So I would actually like to cast uh, Detect Good and Evil. That's and right. then we'll go back over there. That's all right. Uh, so I presume you're going to use the, the action cast, yeah? Yes. Okay, so none of that within 30 feet of you. Um, no one has been magically consecrated or desecrated per se, uh, but you, you are getting a strange mark from Hansi. Uh, it wouldn't really be consecration or desecration, as it's mostly a neutral marking. Uh, but that, that that would pin. Okay. I'll just let the prince know that. There's nothing bad coming from this area right here, from the tent. So now I would just like to see if we can smooth things over with our hosts. The spell would easily penetrate um, the, the fabric of the tent. I will ask you, do you trust me, my prince? Not really, but okay. So, like I said, no evil is happening over there. And I say that in the name of Osirun, who is the god which, which I serve, I will not lie. And it is the case because, of course, it would be on my soul if I did. You're a very hard person to win over, I know that. I'm trying to make him pair. It's not working, it's not working, it's not working is it? <laughs> yeah, she does, but actually, you know, Jake looks and says, that is actually a good thing, you know, in a, in a, a potential political leader. Now, shall we? Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess we'll go back over here and Try again. Okay, so you're you're, you're heading back over to them. Um, they, they appear to have been having <coughs> their own conversation. Oh, pardon me, their own conversation, the, uh, the the man and the middle-aged woman. They're actually, they're, they're actually they, they look to be about the same age. Um, the man will have a few grey hairs. Uh, 
And uh, what would you like to say to them? Mm. Well, I'm not going to apologise. I don't feel like I've done anything wrong. <laughs> I'm an educator, not a miracle worker. Um, can I have a bare bed and possibly a tent? The uh, captain says, I'm afraid we have no spare tents or wagons. Can you just kick someone out and let me have it? Yeah, a family. Can't kick the family out. We, uh, we provided you the best we, we can. It should not rain tonight. Well, then we share a tent with you. I ain't sleeping outside. I don't like bugs. <laughs> the fire should keep them away. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, uh... Sir, uh, sharing a tent with the prince here, he can possibly allay you with many stories and of his, his far off lands, and much of the information you can learn, or learn of those places it would be quite beneficial if you just share a place just for a night to discuss things with each other. What a learning experience, yes. Can you make a persuasion check, please? <laughs> okay, I'll do it. As a straight up thirteen. The uh The Captain the captain sighs and says, Very well. I promise you won't tell any stories. Uh, I don't have any stories to tell you. Excellent. Um, he agrees to find a place inside, uh, but uh, Seems, but, but, but will not uh, eject any of the occupants. But at least I've got a tent. I will not set this camp on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Jake tries not to shift. He just growls and says, No, you will not. Good night. Bye. I can't know. I uh, basically, you saved the town, you saved the village. Because if you didn't give me a tent, I would burn it to the ground with my firebolt. You and firebolt. So I have her. I can use firebolt. I'll start off a vile part in the woods and make it spread to the camp. And I think uh, the, the, the two people that have not been here long have noticed that Riveru is an asshole. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> hey, it makes things interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't try to make him better, but it's not working, is it? <laughs> so, Jake's going to find a place to set up his bedroll. I just have a feeling that, that one of you is going to end up babysitting me, but I think it's mostly you that's doing the babysitting. <laughs> I, uh, I may edge you on. Um, oh my god. I think Jake would see Captain Elias seem to talk to, uh, to Hansi for, uh, for a time. Uh, um, before he and the, uh, the others, um, also turn in for the night. 
Uh, does anyone else want to do anything else, or is it three zeds for all? Um, pray, pray to Orzrant for patience dealing with the prince here, and hopefully getting the hell out of here as soon as possible. He goes cleric life. I do have one question though for you, Dan. For my wild shape characters, is there any? Because I know we're going to turn into, but is there anything specifically that you would prohibit me from turning into, or? Um. Okay, so in terms of what you can turn into, um, you can turn into any of the player's handbook, monster manual, or Volo's guide, beast that you had the challenge rating for, etc, 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 accordance with the rules. Um, if there's anything else you want to turn into from another source, um, send me uh, send me a message. Uh, in terms of, like, within those sources, what biome monsters you're allowed, um, I I'm okay for you to, you know, just uh, give me a list of, like, the, the biomes you might want to be using, like plains and grassland. Would probably, so, like, uh, what's it? Plains, oh no, sorry, grassland, forest, and like maybe mountain, would probably be sort of the uh, the appropriate ones given your upbringing. But, you know, if you're prepared to say in the backstory that you've been to the Arctic and the desert and the Underdark and Chult, you know, we can we can work some stuff out from there. But, yeah, because uh, I was going to do with the upbringing but I was like out of combat uh, I had some ideas for not doing it I was going to do like a squirrel or a mouse just for comedic purposes oh uh, that's fine as for the mouse use the rat stat block but is otherwise fine uh, and I'm not sure what we'll do about the squirrel but yeah I, I think a squirrel uh, would still have a similar movement speed to a rat because I wouldn't use it in combat at all it'd just be purely for comedic value I'll check if the rat has a climbing speed, because uh, I'd expect a squirrel to, 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 to have one. Uh, it's not. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get something, uh, something worked out. But yeah, there's, there's there's no there's no reason why you can't turn into a squirrel. Uh, it's just I'll see if we've got like a stat block. <laughs> Otherwise, oh, okay, the cat has a climbing speed. You can... Um. But yeah, but yeah, you know, so as long as uh, you know, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we can we can work anything else out. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, after this, I'll probably go and look up stat blocks for creatures within my range. Or I, I just want to use the stat block for the squirrel and then just add a climbing speed to it. Um, but yeah. I bet this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay. Uh, well, there's there will be no disturbances for you during the night. So if you wish to take a, a long rest, you may all take a long rest. Um, can I point out something? My dog's not in this tent. I've kidnapped the dog. Right now. <laughs> you took Lancelot? I want a pet animal. I've one rather attached to the Lancelot. I have found a squirrel snack. Awesome. I'm going to be using this now. Okay. So the, uh... You were able to have, you know, a pleasant night by the, uh, by, by the fires or <laughs> up a tree. And, uh... The, uh, the... The next morning... Um, Captain, uh, 
Captain Elias um, calls you and uh, uh, you know calls you over and uh, and asks to speak to you outside. Did you? Is it all of us or just one of us? Oh, um, uh, all of you. Oh, no. I don't, I don't think I can get, I don't think really wants to get up here. <laughs> I don't think someone's going to have to get up because I don't think uh, I'd get up for anyone. Have I seen a skunk before? Because I could use that to wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> But then you'll hit the dog as well, because the dog's sleeping with me. Hmm. Oh yeah, I could use a rooster. Use the raven uh, stat block, but, cock but do a cock-a-doodle-doo um, very loudly. I would like to do that if possible. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I imagine that would uh, what would wake her up. I don't Ma make a con save, Ramiro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, you're gonna have a man screaming the little girl if 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 I fail. A con save. Mm -hmm. I do not know that. <laughs> Oh, you're awake. Uh. And screaming. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably wake up the whole campsite. Is, um... Oh, and uh, I've still got him on the GM layer. Is anyone else coming to talk to the, uh, to, to the captain? I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, he, uh, he is a, a, another man with him, uh, a younger, a younger Vistani, and uh, as he, uh, as he calls you over, he said, um, yeah, he introduces you uh, to him and says, uh, this is my son, uh, Donani. He's, uh, he's engaged to one of the Moslavic, one of Hansi's old people. Her name is, is, uh, is Leela. And, uh, Hansi said the two, uh, got into some, to, some trouble with some creature in the woods. While she, uh, returned. Something wasn't quite right. I, uh, spoke with her elder, and she believes that Leela is dead. If possible, I would... Uh, hunting for her, then? I would like it if you could. We are on our way to Barovia. We cannot uh, afford to do a search ourselves. It uh, can mean a good deal to me, but to us personally, if uh, you could find out what's happened. Of course. Always willing to help. We have some repairs to make on our vehicles and can afford to stay here for one day, maybe two at the latest. I would appreciate your, your haste in this matter. Quark. Cool. 
Is there anything else you want to ask the captain? Nope. I'll ask the captain again about my uh, the person I'm hunting. Uh, he doesn't recognize her either. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, he, he does offer to, um, to try and find some information in Barovia, and when he returns to Valaki. Excellent. Okay, so there's, if there's nothing else you'd like to, uh, to ask him, um, he'd tell you which way the, uh, the Moslavericks went. Uh, he'd say that at the um, at the crossroads, um, you, you know where where you uh, where you turned off to come here, uh, that the Moslavics would have turned southwards uh, as they are going to visit the snow-capped settlement of Arasnu. They should be somewhere along the road there. Okay, so, um, is is there anything is there anything else people want to be doing before heading off? I'm nope. good to go. I'm just a happy bird sitting on a shoulder. Hey, I'm also okay. got a bird. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> There's uh, going to be a lot of. A lot of ravens around, it looks like. <clears throat> well, I don't know how to, quite how to fly yet. <laughs> so, uh, if if I if I just pop you on the uh, on the map, then just do a quick ping here. Uh, there we go. So can you can you see the the encampment now? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So they said that the uh, the the Maslavics were here. Uh, yeah. To, to what would be three days ago now, uh, and they would have gone sort of down here, uh, and then over to here, and will be somewhere along the road. Okay. Um, so, unless there's anyone else, uh, is, unless there's anything anyone else wants to do, I think it would be good to to set off. I'm good to go. All good to go. Let's do this. Ready, ready for action. Guys, I'll put the uh, woods music back on. Yeah. So you're able to um, you're able to, to make your uh, your way through the through the woods. Um, you don't have any trouble uh, with the <coughs> with the spider webs from before. They've all been cut down, and you are able to to join the uh, the crossroads. Um, and, uh, and you know, begin to, to, to head south. Um, it'll take you a, a few hours to, to get there. Uh, and as you do, you can hear, uh, you can hear a noise up ahead. 
It, uh, it sounds, it sounds like digging. I'm gonna have Mira, <clears throat> I'm gonna have Mira go on and scout ahead. So, um, Mira can, uh, uh, does not need to, to make a perception check because it's very clear what's happening. Uh, a large creature with, uh, with many limbs, um, seems to be digging uh, in a pile of soft earth, uh, not too far from the, from the roadside. Um, as, as Mirak looks, um, they can see the, uh, you know, the, the, the creature, um, dig deeply enough to uncover what appears to be several bodies. Oh, we have our first spot of investigation. Well, I'm, I'm actually very good with when it comes to, you know, dead bodies and things, so if, if you mind, I would like to take the lead on this. Uh, not so fast. There's something digging through them. Hmm. Can't quite tell what it is, but it doesn't look super peaceful. Maybe walking into a fight. Um, in that case, um, I'm gonna hold my um, my onk here and focus, and I'd like to use uh, cast eyes of the grave here to see if there's any undead within uh, 60 feet. I wonder if that be a bird, because if there's a fight, I'm going to start off fighting as a bird. Within 60 feet. Um... Okay. So, the, there's no, um, there's, there's no one dead within 60 feet uh, of you, you know, that aren't behind total cover or protected from divination magic. I'll relay that information to the rest of the party as well, so they know that's not a problem. So, shall I put you on the map? I, I, only, only Mirik's sort of seen the uh, creature. I imagine Mirik is. Uh, which. Uh, is that familiar? Probably be like here or something. Yeah, right here. In the tree. Would I be able to. I don't know if it'd do any good. Use my spell find traps. See if there's any traps nearby. You um, you you can do. Um, I'm just gonna have a look at that spell description. Yeah, it's like I'm still getting used to using spells for the first time. No worries. Okay. If you click on the name of the spell in D and D Beyond, this description will come up on the side. Then just hit display. Yeah, there's uh, okay, so the, 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 the trap has to be within line of sight, so, I, I, I mean, depending, you know, and you have a very limited line of sight from where you're currently standing. Well, I still have to do that, because see what the heck the spell is.
Uh, it, it, does that, is anyone doing anything? I'm checking out this stuff. No worries? Um, if it's okay, um, <clears throat> I'd like to, of course, uh, say a prayer and, uh, thank you. And cast Bless on, let's see who here, who's here, who's making it. Uh, myself, uh, we'll do you and we'll do you. So that's three people total. So. And as a D4 to most of your roles. Okay, uh, so who, who's, um, who's got this spell? I'm sorry, can you say it again, please? Sorry, I'm just checking which uh, which party members have uh, had the blessing. Oh, it's going to be... Um... Dang, I'm so bad with names. Christina. Yes, Christina, myself, and... Who's this right here? Come here. Come here, yeah. Because the prince is too far away. And also, it's the prince. He'll, he'll be all right. I wanted to add past without trace. Uh, you can do? Yeah, because I, I can do it with everybody because everybody's within the, my 30 feet limit. I just went to check. Yeah. Ooh, cool. So, uh, plus 10 to your dex rolls, just in case you want to be a little bit more stealthy. <laughs> to, to your stealth rolls. Um, Not yeah. the dex. Plus 10 to the dex. Well, it's, it's, it's plus to your dexterity stealth checks, yeah. Yes, so we can be a little bit more stealthy. <laughs> hey, can I move? Yeah. I don't suspect anything now because I don't see anything. <laughs> uh, okay. So can I move about here? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, can you make me a stealth check, please? Oh. He's not stealthy enough, he's too loud. Well, you got a plus 10 now. Cool. Um... Oh, but are, are you still within 30 feet? Yes. So, um, yeah. So that will actually be a 22, uh, which will allow you, um, you know, free reign to, to have a look. Is anyone else doing anything else? Or are you doing anything else for that matter after walking? I gotta move for the so she kind of says it. I also cannot move my token anymore. Um, oh, that's strange. I did, uh, oh, I must have copied for it. Yeah, I copied the token when it was still disabled. That's right. There we go, you should be able to move it now. I still can't. There we go. Try to make sure everybody stays within 30 feet of me. Move up a little bit. The good thing is we can't be tracked unless we horribly fail the stealth check. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, sir. So. So, so as you're as you're approaching, um, you know the uh, the the creature keeps digging, uh, and so suddenly you hear the uh, the shattering of bone, and then there's a horrific scream from the pit. Can 
can you uh, can everyone roll initiative, please? Oh no. <laughs> Uh, question again, can you, can you, ask, can you add uh, um, bless to initiative rolls? Don't think so. Okay, just um, that. Initiative rolls are ability checks and blesses attack rolls and saving those. So, okay. like, I think guidance works on ability uh, on initiative rolls, but okay, um, bless does not. All right, just asking this all. No, no, no it's, all right. it's a good question. <laughs> I'm going last. Yeah, I'm used to playing a rogue that has really good initiative. As a druid, your initiative sucks. And once again, I forgot to click my, my icon before I rolled initiative. I'm sorry about that. I oh, uh, who wasn't good track of initiative tonight? I'm Taylor and Charlie. Great. That's great. Uh, I can keep track of it. What? Thank I you. don't? Okay, I've got the uh, I've got the uh, the enemy and the NPC uh, initiative scores. Uh, when you're uh, when you're ready. All right. Yeah. If you can give me those. Okay. So uh, what, so if we do the the enemy ones first, uh, the digger. Um, uh, has an initiative uh, get, get, has, uh, got the twenty three initiative, and the uh, the screamer um, will go on initiative count nine. Ooh. Uh, as for your friendly NPCs, um, uh, let's see. Arena goes on initiative count eighteen. And Lancelot the dog on initiative count ten. All right, so I got the digger at twenty three, and then after the digger was who again? Uh, Lancelot the dog. Oh, so the wraith uh, on initiative count nine. Nine. Then after. That you see the friendly NPCs? Uh, yeah. So Irina goes on uh, initiative count 18. Okay. All right. And Lancelot the dog on initiative count 10. Uh, go ahead. Too, too bad on here. Um, but, <laughs> well, the, our initiatives aren't too, too bad here. The digger just gets to go first. Okay, no worries. Uh, so the, um, the, the, the digger, um, is rather alarmed by, you know, this sound. Um, is going to just move back 20 feet, would move back further, but I think at that point, you know, if you're, uh, if you're all there, uh, it will see you, at which point it takes the, uh, the dodge action. Uh, this thing does not look like it wants a fight. <clears throat> and that's going to be the digger's go. Then Arena, I think you said the name was, gets to go next. Okay. Um, so Arena is going to move up to the others. Uh, and. <laughs> Reaction, re draw a rapier and hold an action. Uh, it looks like, you know, she will uh, make an attack if something comes near. Uh, and that's her go. Then Kamir is next. Alright. <laughs> I am 
going to ready a frostbite. I like it. What's the trigger condition? If it starts moving away again. Sure. So if the digger moves away from you, frostbite. Yep. Cool. Uh, can you put a little clock on to show your concentrating, oh, please? Yeah. yeah. I know Frostbite isn't a concentration spell, but holding, etc, etc. Um, okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do? No, that is my turn. Okay. Christina is next. Uh, I'll hold an attack in case it comes towards us. Is it the clock for all their action? Uh, I like to use the clock just to know it's done. Like, you're not strictly concentrating in the same way. Like, if, if someone were to hit you, you wouldn't lose your held attack in the way that someone might lose concentration. But it's, uh, <coughs> yeah, just a useful one. Okay, who's next then? Alright, after that, it's Lancelot. Okay. Uh, okay, Lancelot is all the way over there. Uh, so he's just going to, to move up. Lancelot's also heard the scream, so uh, we'll hold an action and bite anyone who comes near. Well, anything, you know, any, any, anything hostile that comes near. Then Wraith is next. So, so who's next? Uh, Wraith. Okay. So, uh, coming out of the pit. Uh, you can see a uh, malevolent looking spirit. Uh, one that did not wish to be disturbed. Uh, it flies over to, uh, to the digger and makes an attack. This would be with disadvantage as the digger is dodging. Um, will turn it into a miss as the digger is able to narrowly dodge the attack this uh this spirit you know looks at all of you with hostility um, and it does not look like it will be stopped with the mere slaughter of this uh creature before it Who's next? Merrick. It, it says Merrick on there. I don't know who that actually is. I was going based off of what the names are. That's Merrick. I am Merrick. I am going to have Merrick fly over. Yeah. New movement. Have him fly over and give Creamer the whole action. So, for. Reamer, I see everybody else is on there except Reamer. Oh, you're the only one I can't see the initiative for, and I tried scrolling up for it, but I don't see you. I Reamer, rolled an 18. Alright, for some reason it did not show. I couldn't see it on the screen at all. I think that's when my computer just did that crap on itself. No worries. Yeah, so Rumor was supposed to go after Arena and before Premier, but apparently I missed it because my computer decided to be. It's so, so we can we can do it like at the last initiative before looping back. Uh, it's the seals in the monster. Pun? I mean I'm finding this big giant creature thing here. Uh, so the big, the big giant creature was digging around in some corpses, and one of the corpses uh, struck back. 
Uh, can I uh, attack it with a uh, fireball? Uh, you can. It will be at disadvantage because the creature is dodging. <laughs> Do I roll, roll again? Uh, yes, please. And it'd be the low of the two. Wait, no. Advantage from help action cancels it out. Oh, you're right. Uh, in that case, a 24 will hit. Uh... Okay, so that's going to be oh, okay. Four fire damage, uh, all of which goes through. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to, to do? Uh, just see if I've got any more actions. Uh... Nope, uh, that's all I can do. Then, unless Mirak went, then it would be Mirak's turn. So, be, be whose turn? Mirak. Hasn't Mirak already been? this round. I didn't remember because that's, uh, I was talking afterwards was making a comment about how I forgot Rimuru, so I don't know if they actually did something or not. Oh, um. <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, M Mirax, Mirax cool. moved over to where Rimuru was. <laughs> so, who's after Mirax? That would be me. Perfect. So I'm going to use my action to transform into one of my creatures. Which creature do I want? I move into the bear. I'm turning into a black bear. Yeah. <laughs> use that to turn into a black bear and unfortunately I can't do any more because I took some action and I'm going to end my turn there and then finally would be Jake I'm gonna scurry over here not to get too bunched up and see this thing is where within 20 feet so right behind it I'm going to again uh, clap my hands together and cast spiritual weapon because why because cleric fair enough reasons yeah and it's an attack at disadvantage right um, if it's against the, uh, if it's against the digger, then yes. Okay. Because I don't think I was, wait, 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 before, I'm, oh, shoot, I'm sorry. No, no, I made a mistake. Yeah, um, this will be against the digger, because I did, I couldn't tell if I could see this guy over here, so, uh, you know, that's my, my mistake. I'm not going to make a game that for, yeah, I'm going to attack the digger, so one more attack coming. Good thing. Okay, so that's going to be a 19 to hit, uh, for, uh, for 8 force damage. All of that goes through. So a giant yeah. shovel appears and just smacks this thing in the back of the head. <laughs> cool. And I'll just stay right there. Okay. Who's next? And if that ends Jake's turn, it would be back to the digger. Back to the digger. Um, okay. 
the digger does not seem particularly keen to do with uh, with you guys, and it's going to try and deal with this thing that's uh, that's just just come up to uh, to attack it. Um, so it first tries to strike it with its tentacles. I trigger. Oh yes, that's right. I'm uh, gonna make a con save first. Yeah. EC thirteen. It's rolled a four. Uh, so you will get to do your cold damage. Going to be two cold damage plus as advantage on its next attack roll or ability check. Going to attack roll. Ah, okay, so um, that attack. Okay, that attack will hit. Um, but uh, as it, as it strikes it with it, with its tentacles and seems to rub some uh, some substance onto this uh, spirit, the the you know the uh, the spirit. <laughs> Does not seem at all affected. The uh, the creature then tries to follow it up with a bite attack, uh, and that's going to miss. Oh, I gosh, that was That's going to uh, that's going to be the digger's go. And next is Arena. Uh, uh, oh, hmm. wait, wait, okay. Let's see what I can do today. Right, I'm gonna use uh, magic missiles on the big guy. I go for it. So those automatically hit. Uh, is it three I do at level four? Level four. Uh, first level, it's three. It's three plus one for every additional, so you'd be doing six missiles. Well, no, no, but she can't cast it at fourth level. She can only cast it at first or second. Oh, I thought I thought you said you were casting it at fourth. I was just. Ask how many times I roll at the levels uh, I'm at, but okay, forgot. <laughs> oh, I think she means as a fourth level character. Um, uh, but it's a first level spell. Yeah. Okay, so that eight force damage will all go through. Do this way. The. The, uh, the, the, the spirit flashes you with a glare. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Hopefully pray that I'm not going to get injured. <laughs> but that's my turn. Okay. Arena is next. Uh, Irina. Okay, um... She will uh, nervously approach the uh, the creature and try to stab it with a uh, silvered rapier. And I think that's gonna that's gonna be an eleven to hit, which misses. And um, that's a go. Next is Kamir. All right. Moving up alongside. I am going to attack with my rapier. Go for it. I believe this one's also silvered. Ah, that's gonna be a hit. That was close, so it was almost a nat one. Mm. Nine piercing damage. All of that goes through. Uh, 
Time for my bonus action. I'm going to Misty step away. Okay. Yeah, so you can move up to, to 30 feet and there will be no opportunity attack made. Well, I should say there can be no opportunity attack made. Then I will end my turn. Next is Christina. Uh, I will move up then. Can I curse frostbite on the wraith? Uh, you can. So, that's a constitution saving throw, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, it's rolled, uh, it's rolled a 20. Ooh. That's a save. So, uh, that will be enough to save. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. Um, so, it won't be affected. I don't think there's any successful save things that happens to it. Uh, it takes half on a successful save. Uh, it's a yeah, successful save, so it, uh, it won't take anything, I believe. Go. Cool. But when I cast that, I'm gonna be gonna like, what the fuck? Because I didn't know I could do magic. <laughs> no worries. Okay, who's next? Lancelot. Lancelot. Uh, Lancelot's gonna come up, try and take a bite. Okay, that's actually going to uh, going to hit. Um, and. The Wraith does take some piercing damage, but not the full amount of Lancelot's teeth. You, uh, you cannot bite the ethereal that easily. Um, and uh, it does not seem to be able to be knocked prone either. Uh, and that's, that's going to be Lancelot's go. Okay, then it is the race's turn. Um, so the wraith has several targets uh, available to it, um, but it's the uh, it's the digger that really annoys it, um, and that will definitely hit the digger. Um, Okay, the um, that attack leaves the uh, leaves the digger bloodied. Um, oh, that attack does not. Uh, I'd actually, I'm just going to check that. Yeah, that attack leaves the uh, the the digger bloodied, but uh, seemingly very low on uh, on vigor. Um, there is no good way to convey that this attack seems to have lowered its maximum HP, um, but uh, the creature seems very weak after this. And that is going to be the Wraith's go. Alright, it is now Mira's turn. I will once again have him give help to Ramiro. Okay. 
get these next. And then that's me. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Uh, what's my speed at currently? Okay, I could walk a little further as a bear. going to tumble over here with big bear paws and I'm going to attempt to claw at the digger. Did I hit that right at all? I guess. If it was actually... Oh, well, well, do you need to be large? Uh, a bear is a medium size. It says I'm a big black bear, but it says uh, my size is medium. Perfect. No, it's fine. I just wondered if I need to adjust the token. An 18 will hit. Oh, uh, and those doing six. damage will all go through. Then I'm going to end my turn there, leaving it over to Jake. <sighs> Jake's gonna come scurrying over here, run as fast as he can, and sees that there's a wraith here, didn't see earlier, and that becomes his main target. So I'm gonna, I know it's not on the on the screen you're in here, but his uh, buddy cop weapon, the uh, spiritual weapon, is still here. So I'm gonna attack the wraith here. I go for it. 16 hit. Ah, uh, that hits. That much damage. Ah, uh, that's, uh, and for the my main action, I think I'm just gonna, like, uh, take my sneak, whip out my uh, big sex with Python, and say, fight. And I'm gonna just drop it and, uh, whip out my big fat snake right there. And that's my action. Next. The digger. The digger. So the digger is disengaging and moving its full speed away. Uh, the, uh, the those those tasty corpses are not worth it. <laughs> okay. it it's still on the map. That is, it, you know, it's it's full speed. Uh, but the uh, the digger is getting out of there. Who's next? Next is uh. Rimuru. Uh, time to destroy, hopefully. Uh, oh, I went all the way over there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go over here, but it's not too far. And I'm going to camp spell. I'm going to use Firebolt against the big guy. Uh, go for it. <clears throat> 19 to hit. Uh, that'll do it. Uh. Cool. It doesn't seem to quite take the, uh, the full amount, but it, but it is affected. No, I just want to incinerate it now. <laughs> and that's my turn. Okay, arenas. Okay, arenas go. Okay, so I'm just really able to. Um, that's a really, yeah, I'm sure that's we've done the planting rules in the past. Uh, so, yeah, Arena's going to um, make contact with the red, with it, 
And even with the benefits of flanking, <laughs> oh, he's got a 9 to hit, which misses. Uh, and that's a go. Alright, then it is going to be Kamir. Alrighty. There isn't really much I can do without putting the rest of you in the spot. Yeah, Never mind. There is something I can do. I am going to cast Chromatic Orb. Oh, that's gonna miss him, afraid. Oh wait, you get your D. Oh yeah. It is within the range of one D four. Oh. And I did. I did bless you. Don't forget that. Come on. Yeah. A Thirteen meets it, beats it. Barely. Oh. The, uh, the rate doesn't take all the damage, but it, it will take uh, three hold damage. Uh, no, actually, it is going to take all damage, because fourth level I took Elemental Adept. Uh, okay. It In completely which is ignores resistance to cold. Excellent. Yeah, that takes the... Oh, hi. I'll just... There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's, um, yeah, that all goes through. That'll be my turn. Okay, okay. after you, it is Christina's turn. I'll encourage... And I'll rage. And... They'll take a swing. It's gonna be a mess in my parade. Even with the D4? Uh, yeah, because uh, the, the AC's been determined to be a 12, uh, so it's a, a, to be 13. Okay. Um, and the highest you can get is a 12 with, uh, with it adding a D4. Uh, good question, uh, but yeah. That'll be me. Alright, no after you is Lancelot. Lancelot. Uh, I think after the last experience of trying to bite air, um, oh, to trying to bite this thing, I, I think help action on Christina. So the next attack will be made with advantage. Alright, and that would be the race turn. Okay. So many targets. Like a, a kid in a candy shop. So we'll let the guy decide who it's going for. So the fourth target would be Talon. So it uh, makes oh, no. it an attack roll. And my AC is lowered because I'm a bear. <laughs> that's um, my brother that's gonna be a 24 to hit yeah my AC is 11 uh, Other. for 21 necrotic damage Ooh. oh oh no. <laughs> oh no at least you're wild shape so that gives you some kind of protection no I have less AC no I thought the way Wild Shape worked was that once you ran out of HP in your Wild Shape, you revert back to your standard form with... You do, but any extra damage carries over. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't have a lot of health as a bear. Uh, how much health does a bot bear have? Uh, it has, it has, uh, 19. Okay, so... But so I'm also very squishy. Huh? I'm also very squishy. 
Okay, so you drop out of bear form and take two necrotic damage. And can you make me a constitution saving throw, please? <laughs> no, I can't. I would like to load. Okay. So, your maximum hit points are reduced by two. So the good news is, you are technically at full health. The bad news is, everything else. Uh, and Let's go. Would it be ever to ever get those points back? <laughs> it is possible to get those those points back. Well, uh, after the wraith decided to try to kill me, uh, it is now Merrick's turn. Merak's going to fly over, give Arena help action. Just perch on her, perch on her shoulder and scream at her. <laughs> hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Uh, okay. Who's next? It is now my turn. Uh, now that I'm no longer a bear. Hmm. I'm going to attempt my thorn whip. Oh, wait. Because, uh... Uh, okay. Yeah. A, a 12 is gonna miss, I'm afraid. Yep, uh... That will be the end of my turn. And it's not Jake's turn. Seeing if this thing is undead... And how it was uh, being... It very undead. And seeing what it's been able to do... You know what it's time for, guys? I say, you guys may not believe, but I believe enough for you. So I whip out my holy symbol, and once again, I, I point at this thing. My eyes start glowing, and say, "Your soul is forfeit." And I cast Channel Divinity, Path to the Grave. All right, then, Ghost Rider. That's <laughs> my. That's of course my action, but my bonus action is to smack it again with the body cap weapon here to the the uh, shovel. Yes, it will be uh, vulnerability, uh, vulnerable towards the damage, and a 19 will hit. Oh, sorry, a 19, a 24 will oh, hit. Oh, God. And okay. the big-ass snake, which is actually not here right now, should uh, try to make its way over. If they can get over here, I'm not sure. I think, I think it has the speed to do that. Um, you're right, I forgot to put the token down. It's okay. And I would like to have it attack him. That's a big snake. <laughs> and have it that uh, try and restrain him. So. Absolutely. Let me go for the attack here. Hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, my dog saw a squirrel and broke through the window. Broke through the window? It's at 25. Yeah, we had it hit. open. We figured out how to do that's a hit. I thought you meant like the dog jumped and shattered the glass. <laughs> no, she just Who, your dog? Who jumped. Jump? <laughs> She's just very adamant about squirrels. So that's, that's how much damage it takes, and um, as a DC sixteen um, grapple check for the the um, for the target here. Don't worry about the grapple check. Uh, that uh, it is resistant to that damage, but even so, that will be enough 
to uh, finish the uh, the wraith. How would you like your snake to do that? It will simply, like, you know, move around the party, and then it just curls up around and wraps the uh, uh, right up in his coils and looks in the eye and, you know, uh, says out his hunt, and obviously you hear this cracking, snapping sound that, like, just rings out, and then inspectionally squeezes its wraith into a completely, you know, hold under the, the pressure of this snake muscle. And then we just release it into a heat and turn it back into it. Okay. And with that, <coughs> the wraith is silent. Hooray! That's actually kind of cool that you have a giant snake because I can also turn into one of those. How did is that you my challenge? Get that? Does anyone particularly want to pursue the digger to, to, to the death for the for the crime of grave robbing? Uh, otherwise, I think we can drop out of initiative. Yeah, no, really. I, I, I should. Try. Being a, being a cleric of the grave, I should go after that thing. But I will not force anyone else to help me out. What? It was just trying to live. Everything needs to eat. That thing is. Talon's a little cold. But... I'm gonna turn to Talon and be like, "I did magic. Did you see that?" Um. Yeah, but. I don't know. I don't know I can do it. What can you do what you can't do you know you can't do? What? What? How can you know that I, you how I, how can you not know what you just did? But I don't know I can do that. How else how else do you want me to explain that? In a better way than you just explained it to me now. I, I have a don't know how I did that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Grand DM, so I have cure wounds, and it says they can heal narcotic damage. Is it possible that I could use that to reverse the two points? Uh. No, so the spell you'd need is Greater Restoration. But can you make a medicine check, please? Yes. Bada bing, bada bing. If it would like to, you know, load. There you go. Okay. So, um, so you you assess the severity of your your wounds. You believe you believe that this sort of thing can be overcome with a long rest. Uh, I would okay. recommend taking one now. You've you know you've uh, it's it's still you know, it's still going to be like late morning, um, but uh, you know that that would be the the solution. All right. If anybody needs any healing, that uh, most of my spells are purely healing or support. That's, that's alright. Um, so Jake has sent uh, his, uh, his snake to hunt, and we will get back with the results of that. Uh, in the meantime, does anyone want to take a look at the pit? Yes, I would. Yes. So, yeah, I, would like to look, I would like to look into the best Make sure that it looks back. So looking, looking into it, um, you can see that it's uh, it's it's just a mass grave. There's uh, that you know there, there are about a dozen skeletons there, um, one of whom, um, you know, although you know they were dressed in rags, this one has. Uh, 
has a, a raven amulet. Ooh. That, is cool. uh, that looks reasonably valuable. Uh, it's silver, and unlike you know the uh, you know, and unlike uh, any of the other uh, assorted ornaments, doesn't seem to have tarnished. Are there any engravings on it? Um, there are no engravings on it, uh, but you know if you uh, if you touch it, uh, you have a, a rather uncomfortable feeling. I'm gonna take it and stow it in my bag for now. Okay. That's all right. Uh, additionally, you find one corpse that looks relatively flat, uh, you know, a relatively fresh. Uh, and, you know, this seems to be, uh, what the, uh, what the digger was after. And what's condition? So the um, the conditions not uh, great. Look, looking at it, it, it appears to be the uh, the corpse of uh, uh, of an old woman um, in you know in underclothes. Um, she uh, you know she uh, she does bear. Uh, she does bear a ring, um, in that uh, you, you know that that looks to be reasonably valuable. Is there any way to identify if this was the person we were sent to look for? Um. So you're you, you know you're after a relatively young woman. Then most likely not. Is, oh, the ring. If someone else wants it, they can get it. Is there anything anyone else wants to do about the pit? Mm -hmm. Can I check around to it? Uh, can, can you make me an investigation check, please? Yes. No. <laughs> Apparently I can't. <laughs> the four would come through. Okay. Um, you, um, you, you know, you, you're not able to, to discern much about the pit. It's, uh, it's a pit. Um, if anyone else wants to make a, a second opinion, a, 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 wants to give a second opinion, that they uh, they can do so. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. I'm just too uh, happy uh, to have uh, a rock in the end. Right, so uh, Christina's had a look. So this pit uh, does not seem to have been dug with a shovel. Uh, it looks to have been clawed out of the ground. Uh, additionally. Judging by the layers of mud and some of the bodies, it appears to have been uh, dug, filled in, dug, filled in, or dug, filled in several times. Um, additionally, the um, the bodies, both the corpse and the skeletons, uh, have strange marks on the necks. So they look like puncture marks uh no can you make a medicine check please yeah. okay so yeah I'll, I'll give you the um the description of what you can see um so in, on the skeletons you can see some like crushed vertebrae on the neck and on the corpse you can see some very strong uh you know marks that have been left um, they they look to have been they look to be strangulation marks, uh, but they don't seem to have been left by a rope per se. They, but they they seem to have been <coughs> left by something of similar width, uh, and it looks like that's what uh, has uh, has killed all of these bodies, or all of the, yeah all of these people. 
Could it have been the digger? Um, did its tentacles line up to be around the same size? The tentacles appeared to be larger, uh, and it, when you saw um, what it did with the rake, it tried to rub some kind of like milky sap onto it, uh, and there's there's no indication that the corpse has had any of that. Hmm. Um, you know the uh, additionally the, the the you know the the the, the, the digger. Uh, also tried to bite the rake, and there's no bite marks on any of the uh, on any of the corpses, nor are there any signs of bite marks on the skeletons. Why was he trying to dig the bodies up? There has to be something down there. Yeah. Who picked its issues? If it wasn't something here, then maybe there's something deeper down? Do we want to risk going down and checking them? I think we'll be fine. As long as we take it slow. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna go jump down there. Cause I'm, cause I'm crazy. Okay, so Ramiru so Ramiru's jumping into the pit. At this point, I think uh, the snake would return with one dead creature uh, still wrapped in its coils. You reverse a good job and return. So the snake turns back into a stick. I pick it and pick up my staff, and I like to inspect this creature to make sure it's dead, dead. Go for it. Um, it, it does, uh, appear to be dead. <laughs> so, I uh, want to turn in, I can turn into the large snake, well, version of the large snake. I want to do that and then proceed to go down into the pit. <laughs> no worries. So, uh, in the pit, there's, uh, you know, there's a dozen skeletons in various stages of, de you know, decay. Uh, none of them seem to have any... <laughs> <laughs> any flesh left on them, and all of them are in rags. Can I roll perception to see if I see anything deeper? Um... There, there doesn't seem to be uh, anything beneath the skeletons. You're like, you can try digging into the ground. Yeah, we're gonna have to start moving. I'll, I'll use my giant snake. Uh, it's not a giant constrictor snake. It is just called the giant snake that is one below it, so the stats are not quite there. It's not as big. No worries. Um, yeah, it's okay, just called so the that, giant that's the second snake. use of wild shape. Um, are, are you trying yep, to I, dig yeah, a bit? Yeah, I'm trying to dig into the pit a little bit. I can't shape shift okay. anymore until my short rest. Okay, so um, d d does it have a boa speed, this snake? This snake? It, I think it, it does. Let me double check. Uh, it's about 10 feet. A boa speed of 10 feet? Yeah, it, I don't really have many. I think it's 10. It, yeah, it says it on the one I pulled up. I don't think I googled the right one. Um, yeah, because the, the ones I see that of the, that you have the right challenge rating for are the constrictor snake, which has a swim speed but not a boa speed, and oh, the giant yeah, it, poison snake, which is the same. Yeah, I, it's called the shimmer snake is what I was using. It has a speed of 20 feet but burrow of 30. Um... Oh, okay. So that that's not in the the, the monster manual of any of the, uh, the 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 wizard sources. Yeah, I just googled it and it said uh, D and D database of, uh, and it said it was a common. So I was like, oh, that's a snake. But I can change it. The one I found for that is challenge rating four. 
Oh, this one says two, but this one yet again could be a homebrew, so I'll just switch over to a different one. Yeah, I, I think if you're if you're looking for something with a, a bow of speed, I don't think any of the the snakes in the in the monster manual uh, have it. Uh, like if, if yeah. you wanted something with a bow of speed, you can shift into like a badger or something. The mole. I I do have a badger. That I do have. Do it. Yeah, badger. I can be a badger. Yeah, no no worries. Like... That that would be able to bow a badger or a giant badger. I, I can't be a giant badger, unfortunately, but I can be a badger. I am a tiny beast that can burrow at least 20 feet. Oh, no, burrow 5 feet. My speed is 20. No worries. Uh, I okay, only have so... three Okay, so, um, so digging, so you're able to, 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 to dig down a bit. Uh, but you know you're not really able to, to to find anything. It looks like uh, well you know whatever this digger did, it, it got to the you know it got to to, to you, you know the the bottom of the um, of the useful parts. It also starts getting harder, and you start getting into stone. So it looks like there's not going to be uh, anything more, or at least not that uh, the creature that made the original pit um, would be able to use. So I'm going to crawl back out and kind of in badger form, put my little paws up as a sort of, I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> Confusing. Oh, sorry. I'm tired. tired. <laughs> No worries. Um, I think this would be a good place to um, to end it for the for the night because we normally finish at half ten anyway. Um, and you know we've uh, you've done an investigation of the pit. I think this would be a good place to have a halt, and we'll be back in two weeks. Alrighty. Okay. Well, um, before. Before we leave, uh, I just want to, to, to do the credits. Oh, obviously, thank you, uh, thank, thank you all for coming. And, thank you. Uh, the uh, the maps are from DM and E. Uh, the tokens are from Wizards of the Coast, and the music is from Serpent Sound Studios. And this has been a, a Fate of the Dice production of Nathan and I hope you, the audience, have had a good one. And I would like to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day to those who celebrated. Hey, thank you. You as well. Also, just in time. Gonna add in. Also, gonna add in. Uh, join us next Friday for um, Fate's birthday. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.